Dutch Kappa. No. Some pledge Q sci fi. But I pledged Alpha Phi Alpha. And I'll be an Alpha man until the day I die. I said, Zoom, zoom, zoom. My brother, I love my black and gold. Ooh, I got the fever all in my body, the fever down in my soul. That alpha fever, zoom, zoom, zoom. My brother, I love my black and gold. Black and old gold. So Tau Epsilon is a unique, unique chapter in that uh, the, uh, the name was founded in uh, 1999 at the uh, Regional Leadership Conference in uh, Florida. Uh, it wasn't until 2001 when me and two of my line brothers were initiated into Tau Epsilon. So while we were recognized by the fraternity as a chapter, we still weren't recognized on Clayton State until the following year when we had um, our second line and then we were able to get our official charter. Uh, that happened in April of 2002. And at that point is when it became an official organization on the campus of Clayton State University. Veronica Ransom is the uh, official mother of Ta Epsilon. We actually also had an on-campus mother at the time, Ms. Deborah Greer. But Veronica Ransom was instrumental in the formation of the chapter because it was her connections with uh, Ms. Susan Carter and um, in turn brother uh, John Carter, who got the ball rolling to get a, a chapter started at Clayton State. And in true motherly fashion, she's always, you know, picking our collar and uh, putting us to the side and keeping us in check. Even myself as a grown um, male <laughs> in another chapter, she always does take the time to pull me by the collar, you know, let us know when we need to revisit or refocus our, um, our attention on certain things. Well, uh, Brother Christian, who had been a part of the fraternity for a number of years, uh, I think at the time that he uh, was interested in chartering Pi Gamma Lambda or bringing a group of get, uh, other brothers together to charter, the uh, chapter was a member of Ada Lambda. And there was a military affairs committee that he was a part of. But because Brothers who are in the military are transient, and they also have uh, schedules that was not always conducive for them to come to chapter meetings uh, at Ada Lambda because we had very few chapters uh, in the city at that time. Uh, he decided that it probably would be more convenient for those brothers who were in the military uh, or surrounding areas to come on camp, uh, excuse me, on the military base to uh, do activities, to meet, to be a part of, you know, fellowship and a brotherhood. I think that um, the coming together of Alpha Men and chartering at Fort McPherson was a great um, idea, and Brother Christian was the person who pretty much kind of did the uh, pulling together of those brothers who had an interest, you know, to have uh, the chapter there. And uh, we all had several meetings, you know, prior to, and then went through the procedures uh, necessary to get the uh, chapter started. And uh, once we did, then we began to support uh, the military community from that point. got smaller as the military brothers focuses turned to uh, fighting their war. We, we were so small we used to meet in brothers homes uh, and I'm, I'm gonna skip I'm gonna skip up in time to a, just a few years ago I was sitting in a fraternity meeting looking over the different papers and reports that we were given at the beginning of the fraternity meeting and was absolutely shocked because I found that we had 51 members 
I said, 51, when we used to meet in each other's homes. So I did. Pag MLM has a sale from where I've seen it started. Well, you know, of course, I was initiated with one of the, maybe the fourth line in 1992. And we went to a lot of universities where chapter, as I mentioned before, down to just, bad, just keeping our charter, right? And we moved up, we, that did not stop us.